For this session, we're going to look at creating rollover um, links in Dreamweaver. There's several ways to do rollover links or rollover buttons. One is simply a text method where you're just using CSS to achieve that. Uh, there's a second method with imagery that you have to go back to Photoshop and create a second set of slices and, um, and you can do it through the, the Dreamweaver insert panel. Uh, in this session, we're just going to look at the text version only. So we'll look at the, the uh, image version in the next session. So I'm here in Dreamweaver. I've actually got my root folder established. I've already got a container dropped in. You can see the yellow background color here. I'm going to drop a title on here called Rollover Demo Number 1 because I'll have another one here. If I save this and look at this in my browser real quickly, uh, I can see that um, that it's all centered in the middle of the screen. It just kind of looks exactly like, like it does in Dreamweaver with the exception of the little dashed outline around the div. Now to start this, I'm going to go ahead and create some text links. I'll say home, about, products, services, and contact. And to make a link in Dreamweaver, I'm simply going to highlight what it is, come down here to the link, uh, it's the properties panel on the bottom of the screen to where it says link, and I'll type in the page it should go to. So home, for example, should go to index.html. About is going to go to about.html. Remember to always keep uh, what you're typing under link down there, all lowercase, no spaces. Um, and also, when you're highlighting these up here to create links, double-clicking the word will highlight that word for you. Um, I try not to click and drag because sometimes when you click and drag, you actually get the spaces around it, and we certainly don't want any of the spaces between these links to be included. So I just double-click the word, and I'll come down here and type in services.html. Don't forget to put the .html on the end. I see that forgotten quite a bit. Contact.html is my last one. Now, when I look at this uh, here in Dreamweaver, they all are blue and underlined. If I look at it in my browser, same thing happens. They're blue and underlined, with the exception of Home, because Home is actually, uh, we've already been to that page. Now, I haven't been to these other pages yet because I haven't made them yet. If I click on them, I'm going to get an error message. And I should, because I don't have an about.html in my root folder yet. Now notice there's some default colors with links. Uh, normally links are blue and underlined. Once you've been to a link, it's a visited link and it's purple and underlined. So there's a few things where we can uh, use our CSS to make these look better. To do that, we're going to make a new CSS rule altogether. If you haven't created a CSS rule yet, make sure you'll save it down under a new style sheet file. But I've already got one from a previous session, so mine is already pointed to my style. I'm going to change it from class to tag because I'm actually going to apply this to an anchor tag. When I pull down tag, this uh, selector menu changes to a drop down where I can see basically a list of all the HTML tags. So I want the A tag, the anchor tag. That's the, the tag that really creates a link. And this is going to be a little bit different. I don't want to just change the way that all uh, the links work. Or, or maybe I do here first. That's fine. Let's go ahead and just leave it as A. And we'll hit OK. And I can specify exactly what I want my links to look like. First of all, if I want the color to not be blue, let's say I want them to be a dark red, I can apply, and there we go. If I'd like to take that underline off, Right over here under text decoration, you've got several choices, and one of those choices is none. If you choose none and hit apply, it takes the underline away. So your links basically have a different look because of this. You can also change the font. You could change the size. Um, you can make them bold if you'd like. I'm going to make these a little bigger. And I'll give it a font weight of bold. So now my links have a very specific look. I'm also going to go under the box category, and we've talked about padding and margins. Uh, wouldn't it be cool if I actually put a pad or margin around this so I space those links out from each other so they're not right up against each other? 
I don't want a, a pad or margin on all four sides. I actually just like to have it on maybe just on the right. So if I add a, a margin, for example, on the right side, it'll push all these other ones over. Now you remember that padding and margins are about the same. Uh, padding is space on the inside where margin is space on the outside. I can tell you from experience margin is the one we want, but I'm going to show you both. I'm going to show you why we don't want padding. I'll start with padding because that's going to be the wrong one. Let's say that I add 25 pixels to the right side of this. So I'll uncheck the same for all box. I'll choose 25 on the right and hit apply. And that adds 25 pixels to the right of each one of these links. Maybe I can increase that to 50 or so, and you see what that's doing. Now if I go ahead and hit OK, I'm going to save all and peek at these in my browser again, and I'll show you why padding is bad. Visually it looks good, but if you can see my cursor, uh, when I roll over any of these, these words, it, my cursor changes to the hand. And that's a good thing. That lets the users know this is indeed a link. But remember, with padding, you're adding space on the inside. So that actually extends the space of the link all the way over to the other link. So there's basically very, very little space between each link because all of this is actually considered part of the About link. Even though I'm closer to products, I would be clicking on About at this point. So when we're adding space to our links, um, Margin is the better one. So I'm going to delete the 50 out of here on padding. I'm going to add 50 on the right of the margin. Should look exactly the same when it's all said and done, but I won't have that weird quirky problem with my links. So if I refresh that now, when I'm between the links, there's no rollover, there's no button at all. So I can only uh, click on the words. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Now if we go peek at our CSS code, remember you can always click up here on this right under your tab for the CSS and you can look at your code and you can see that it's simply got the anchor tag there. Now we can add more anchor tags uh, to this. Now the standard uh, a tag is going to affect every link you've got on your page but there are four what I would call sort of subsections or substyles to the anchor tag. Those include a hover, spelled H-O-V-E-R. Uh, a hover is sort of like a rollover state. So uh, when you hover your mouse over one of these links, you can, you can change its style so that it looks a little different. To get to a hover, um, or, or to any of these substates, you can go to your CSS styles panel, create a new rule, and this time uh, we're going to try compound. Compound means we're going to... Um, change a couple of the things around or, or be able to do more than one uh, one thing. When you click on compound, there's really only a few choices down on this list. You should see a link, a visited, a hover, a active. A link is the normal link state. Uh, that's kind of what we've already done. It, it's assumed that if you don't have anything after the A, uh, you're, uh, you're talking about the A link. A visited will be its visited state, so you could change what the normally would be purple. Uh, hover is going to be the rollover, and A active is when it's like the what's happening as you're clicking it, which is kind of pointless because it's such a quick little thing you barely even see it. Uh, but active is as you're clicking. So I'm going to choose A hover, and I can hit OK. And let's say the only thing I want to change, well, I'll change a couple things. I'll make the font size bigger. I'll make the size 24, which is going to make my layout go crazy, by the way. Uh, more realistically, I'm going to change its color to something else. So generally, you're not going to change too much about it, just one or two things. I'm going to do a save all. Don't forget to always save all. Go check this out in my browser. Now when I roll over these, they change both size and uh, color. And I just did the size to, to show that it's possible to do that, but you can see not only is it changing the size of the text, it's also changing the height of this div because the div has to get bigger to accommodate. So it's not a great idea to change a lot about your links, but maybe uh, there in the CSS you change its color, maybe you put the underline on whenever you, uh, you roll over or, or so on. 
So you can mess around with those, but in Dreamweaver, you're essentially making a new CSS rule, choosing compound, and going with one of the predetermined uh, links there. So that's about it for creating rollover effects with just CSS. Uh, in the next session, we'll look at how to do that with JavaScript and Photoshop, uh, creating what's called a rollover uh, button instead of just a, a rollover text.